Hey, Life Point family. I am so happy to be here with you today to um, bring our daily devotional from the Psalms, from the book of Psalms. And today I'm going to focus in on Psalm 37, 38, and 39. And um, I thought that the Lord would lead me to one specific location to really um, laser in on, and instead he gave me a really broad overview of all three psalms. And so I'm going to walk you through um, just what he walked me through and what he revealed to me as I was prayerfully reading through and seeking his heart. And so... Um, starting with Psalm 37, basically David warns us against following after the wicked, and um, he gives us examples of the difference between the destination of those who follow the wicked path and those who follow after God. So throughout the entire psalm, you see a clear comparison of the two options and the end results. And so for me, this really um, spoke to me about giving us an opportunity to really position ourselves according to our free will. And what it boils down to is choice. And so we're positioned to choose. And um, David gives us full awareness of what we're choosing and um, what the end result will be. And then as we move to Psalm 38, David reveals to us what happens to us personally and individually when we choose sin. And so in this psalm, it's um, clearly revealed that sin doesn't just affect our eternal destination, um, but David makes it clear that there is an immediate and present danger when we're living in sin. And so ultimately the bottom line is sin leads to death. We it, It's clear throughout the entire Bible that sin leads to death. And so David shares with us that it literally, if you think about being on a journey to death through sin, David tells us how it produces sickness in our bodies. And so that sin sickness leads us to death. It can make us physically sick, mentally sick, emotionally sick, spiritually sick, relationally sick. Um, and David decides and makes a declaration that his only hope is to put his trust in the Lord. And um, then he turns trust into an action word by confessing. So keep that in mind. And then we get to Psalm 39, where David makes an attempt to live out his motto, which he says is guarding his ways for all of his days. And so the only problem I see with that, it sounds really good on the surface to guard your ways, but the issue appears that David is attempting to do this in his own strength, um, in his own way, and he does it by choosing to be silent. And the strategy just doesn't work out too well for him in his silence. He inevitably is kept from even speaking good things. So he, as he holds his tongue, what begins to happen is his thoughts start to boil over within him and eventually just come pouring out his mouth. So his strategy of silence is not very effective. Um, and then suddenly the psalm just switches gears like it moves straight out of that into David having this stark awareness of his smallness. 
and how brief his time is here on earth compared to eternity. And again, his final conclusion is that his only hope is in God alone. And he confesses that apart from him who is able, he'll literally waste away to nothing. And so this is really just a very brief overview of the three Psalms. But what I see in a nutshell from these three Psalms, Psalm 37, 38, and 39, are some really clear and simple instructions. Number one, don't follow after the wicked, follow after God. Number two, steer clear from sin. And when you find yourself on that path of destruction, trust the Lord through confession so that he can restore you. And number three, don't try to do it in your own strength with your own strategies. That's just a setup for failure. Instead, seek the Lord. And as you are reminded of your own smallness and your own brief time here on the earth, fix your eyes on his greatness. He's a God who protects. He's the God who forgives and he restores and he provides. So fix your eyes on his greatness. And I'd like to leave you with this from Psalm 37. If there's anything I really want to zero in on between Psalm 37 through 39, it's right here in Psalm 37. And I'm going to read from the Passion Translation, verses 3 through 7, verse 11, and verses 18 and 19. Keep trusting in the Lord and do what is right in his eyes. Fix your heart on the promises of God and you will be secure. Feasting on his faithfulness. Make God the utmost delight and pleasure of your life. And he will provide for you what you desire the most. Give God the right to direct your life. And as you trust him along the way, you will find that he pulled it off perfectly. He will appear as your righteousness, as sure as the dawning of a new day. He will manifest as your justice, as sure and strong as the noonday sun. Quiet your heart in his presence and pray. Keep hope alive as you long for God to come through for you. The humble of heart will inherit every promise and enjoy abundant peace. Day by day, the Lord watches the good deeds of the godly and he prepares for them his forever reward. Even in a time of disaster, he will watch over them and they will always have more than enough no matter what happens. Hallelujah. I just praise God for this word. And I think it's a word in due season, a word that's so fit to the current climate that we're living in. And so go back and read that psalm again. Spend some time just meditating there. And with this in mind, I want to bring you a challenge. I want to challenge you to turn this devotion into an activity. So Yes, I'm giving you homework. And, and what I'd like you to do is set an appointment, make a date with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Gather around the table for some open conversation and just give them permission to walk you through a spiritual inventory. And as you do this, ask yourself, these questions. 
Am I following after the wicked? And then listen for their response. Ask yourself, am I living in sin? Is there something I need to confess? And give the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit room to speak into that. And then ask, am I trying to fix it in my own strength with my own strategies? And I wholeheartedly believe that if you ask these questions gathered around the table with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, they'll respond. They'll give you some feedback. And then ask them this question, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, will you lead me in godliness? Will you forgive me? And will you direct my steps as I trust in you? Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your holy word. I thank you for each one listening, Lord God, and I trust that your Holy Spirit is leading them individually and personally through these three songs, God, and, and highlighting to them, Lord, the choice that's before them, God. I pray Father, that you would give them follow through, that they would take the assignment seriously and that they would set aside time and make a date, whether it be at their kitchen table, out in the park, just set a date to gather around the table with each of you, the one triune God and allow you to speak into their lives as they do their own spiritual inventory, Lord God. So that ultimately, as they delight in you in that moment and trust in you, you will give them the desires of their heart and they will come to find that as they give you the right to direct, your, direct their lives, God, that you will pull it off perfectly, that things will begin to fall into place and that you will manifest your justice and your righteousness will appear in their lives, God, and that you will bring them into a quietness and a hope that brings them alive in you. God, humble their hearts, Lord, that they might receive every promise and inherit and enjoy the abundant peace that is found in Jesus Christ. Lord, lead them day by day in the name of Jesus and to the good deeds that you have prepared for them, that you have planned in advance for them, Lord God. Watch over them, Father, no matter what happens. And may they be blessed through this assignment, Lord God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you guys for taking time to join me here in the Psalms and um, have a blessed day.